everybody. I'm Stacy, And I'm your daughter, Nikki. And, and welcome, welcome to Kittynomics. Yay! Can you believe that week kind of like flew by? It was supposed to be, it's a short week, but it felt long and now it's short again. I don't know, but <laughs> it's Friday. So that means it's Kids Financial Literacy Friday with Kittynomics. So yay! Thank you everybody for being here and logging on. We have had a very busy week. So hi, Carlene, how are you? Hi, Akira, how are you guys? How's everybody in the chat? I hope you guys had a good week. Oh, how was Easter? It was so How was Easter? Let me know in the chat how Easter was. So that oh, it was great, fantastic. I, I guess everybody got like a lot of chocolate. Nikki got a lot of chocolate. That's for sure. Everybody's like, I got a lot of chocolate. So sugar high. That's probably what you guys were on. I didn't Good eat stuff. The chocolate, yes, you did. You ate a lot of your chocolate and there and all the other some of the other candies and stuff. But anyways, yay for everybody being here on this Friday. Oh, you went to a festival. That's nice. Which festival did you go to? That sounds fun. Um, okay, so while you guys chat in the chat box, let me start sharing my screen, right, as usual. Oh, you went to church. So did we. Fantastic. Went to church. Let me open up my chat box while I, can I not open up the chat box while I'm talking? Yeah, here we go. All right. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to Kittynomics. If this is your first time on Kitty. Economic. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Of course, I always say for all of our new people that have joined today, please let us know in the chat box and all the kids will welcome you in the chat box if you are new. And of course, welcome back to all of our returning kitties that are here week after week. We love you, love you, love you for being here. And why is there something on the logo? What's on the logo? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. What is that? I don't know. That's a good catch. I don't know. What is that on that logo? Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what that was. It's back again. It is back again. I don't know what that is. Hang on. Let me just try and get, back. there we go. Oh, I don't know. It won't go away. All right. I'm going to have to fix it another time. All just, right. You can just move it. I did try to move it. All right. There, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's move it down to the bottom. There See? we go. All right. So let's get into Kitty Nomics today. We did a lot of talking, didn't Kitty. we? It was a lot of talking. All right. So thank you for joining Kitty Nomics. What is Kitty Nomics about? Go ahead, Mickey. Okay. Kitty Nomics will help kids ages eight, eight plus to develop a healthy relationship towards financial literacy, helping to start up kids on the right path to have a successful financial future to have a successful financial future. That's what we want for everybody out there. That's what we want for you. That's what she wants for me. That's what we want for everybody, right? We want everybody to have an uber successful financial future. And uh, we hope Kitty Domics will help you guys get there, right? That's what we want. So let's just go through some of the housekeeping items before we introduce our two. Today, we have two special guests. Two returning Uber special guests. I love these ladies. They are so awesome. But before I get into these two phenomenal women, I will uh, just let you guys know the housekeeping item. So just please remember Kittynomics is always recorded. So we record each webinar and then we upload it to our Kittynomics YouTube channel. So if you have missed any part of this webinar or any of our previous webinars, they are all loaded on our Kittynomics YouTube channel. So you can always watch this one back, which will be uploaded by 8 p.m. tonight, which is Eastern Standard Time. And of course, all of our other uh, videos are all there. So you can always go back and catch up on any of the other uh, videos that we've uh, recorded through our long history of Kittynomics now, which is amazing. And please remember that the chat box is the only way for us to communicate because we cannot see or hear anybody, right, to maintain everybody's privacies. So please remember to keep the chat box nice and safe, and we like to maintain a safe environment uh, here on Kittynomics. So please, we never want to see any personal information, right? So never anybody's personal addresses, email addresses, uh, phone numbers, uh, your exact ages, right? We just don't want to, we just don't want anybody to share any of the, their personal, personal information um, in the chat, back, chat, chat box. <laughs> and 
please remember that we have kids younger than eight and sometimes older than 13, but we always want to be kind to everybody. So please respect everybody's uh, answers because sometimes you may not understand. And uh, Bianca, if you have a question, you gotta type it into the chat box. Also, please remember that the chat box is there to answer questions. I know you guys chat away in the chat box because I can see it now. But when you guys hear me say, please focus on whoever is presenting this week. I want you guys to simmer down in the chat box, okay? Because I see you guys talking about Power Rangers right now, which is cool. But <laughs> I can see what's happening in the chat box, okay? So I maintain the chat box. You can always ask me questions in the chat box. And then, of course, I will ask the questions to our special guest experts, okay? So before we get into our guest experts, let's do... Roll call! All right, in the chat box, please tell me which country you are joining from today. Let me see. Um, Akira, Canada. What's going on? Where's the chat box? Come on, <laughs> where are you guys joining from today? Is Akira going to be the only one to answer? Let me see. Let's see. I'm calling from Canada, Carlene. Good stuff, good stuff. Timbaland is uh, Solar System Earth, North America, Canada, Ontario, Burlington. I love how you always like pinpoint from like, you know, the solar system on down. You, you drill it down, I love it. Um, let me see, <laughs> Akira's from Lakeview Park, awesome. Uh, Layla and Kelsey are from, we are from Fry's Island, oh. That would be like such a phenomenal land to be on, right? Like imagine eating fries, like your, your whole land is made up of fries, especially if it's like McDonald's fries or something. Oh, tastes good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> you can get McDonald's after this. No. <laughs> um, Timlin said, too good. Too good. Yes. Um, let me just see. Uh, universe, solar system, Earth, North America, Canada, Ontario, Burlington. We got that one. Stuart Timmy, got you. Um, uh, Lil J, what's up, Lil J? Uh, I'm from my mansion. Woo hoo! Ooh, that's that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, that's awesome, Layla and Kelsey. You guys are eating fries like right now. See, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, whose idea was that to say about the fries? No, we're not getting McDonald's. We're doing kittynomics. <laughs> okay, that's so awesome. All right. And of course, oh, somebody said Wales. Who said Wales? Who said, oh, Micah, yes. Hi, Micah. <laughs> Hi, Micah. Good to have you on as usual. Uh, who's going to Great Wolf Lodge? That's awesome. We love it there. Um, okay, and did we miss anybody's birthday in the last week, two weeks? Because we, we weren't there last week, right? So two weeks, have we missed anybody's birthday? Is it anybody's birthday in the last two weeks? So we can wish you happy birthday. Akira, is it really your birthday? Because you keep saying that every week. No. By this time, you'd be like 99 years old. <laughs> With all the birthdays you've had on Kittynomics, let me know. <laughs> Uh, this Sunday, Lil J. Oh, that's awesome. Yay. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. We need a birthday song that I can license. <laughs> <laughs> so you can sing it on Kittynomics because I can't sing the other birthday songs. All right. Happy birthday. That's awesome. I hope you have a fabulous birthday. Are you doing anything special? Either way, it's your birthday, so it's always special, right? Birthdays are there to celebrate you. It's a happy birthday to you. All the kids will wish you happy birthday in the chat. All right. I forgot to ask Mickey Hookums. Nobody reminded me. What I didn't get a I didn't get a remind from Mickey. Mickey, where are you from? <laughs> Nobody reminded me this week. <laughs> you know, I always forget her, even though she sits right beside me. Um, I don't know. You have so much time to think. Tell me, where are you from today? Let me see. I'm just gonna say. Canada? <laughs> All right. Well, well, your time's up. <laughs> Too bad. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> it's like Jeopardy. I know. I know. Um, Netherlands. Netherlands? Oh, that's nice. That's awesome. 
that is nice. We, we hope to go there one day. That'd be amazing. Okay, all right. So let's get into Kittynomics. Happy birthday, everybody. Dion's wishing you happy birthday, Lil J. Uh, Michael's wishing you happy birthday. Happy birthday, awesome. Okay, let's get into our topic today. So this week, we have two phenomenal women. I am so excited for them to have to have them back on. So remember, I've been saying to you guys that uh, Kittynomics is now trademarked, like our, our name Kittynomics is now trademarked. And that was because of these awesome two ladies. That name now belongs to out to us and, uh, and uh, we, are, we are the established ones to use it. So we wanted to have them, of course, back on Kittynomics. And this week, we're going to talk about how to choose the right name to trademark, right? Like, that's really important. Having your name says so much about you. And so how do you choose the right one that identifies, you know, your business and what it is that you guys maybe want to do um, when you get older? And so we have Miss Cynthia and Miss Kimberly back on Kittynomics. So I'm just going to read Miss Cynthia's. Oh, hi, Isha. Um, let's read uh, Miss Cynthia's bio. So Cynthia Mason is a Canadian lawyer and trademark agent with a passion for helping businesses arm themselves with the tools necessary to protect their brands from copycats, right? Nobody likes to be copycat, although they do say that's the, like, the most like, sincere form of flattery, right? That's yeah, what they say. Um, over the span, hold on, over the span of her near 20 year legal career, she has worked with numerous Fortune 500 companies to protect their names, logos, and taglines from theft and misuse, right? That's awesome. And now we have Miss Kimberly, Miss Kimberly Firth, Firth Dressler. Uh, is an Ontario and Jamaican lawyer who has almost 10 years of experience in worldwide brand portfolio management for companies like Apple and Ricketts. Uh, Bickenser. <laughs> she loves all areas of trademark law and protection, but she's most proud to claim an exceptional track record of stopping the unauthorized use of trademarks. So let's give a big Kittynomics round of applause. To Miss Cynthia and Miss Kimberly, I'm going to stop share and I'll get back into the chat box. Let's see here. There we go. Hi, ladies. Hi. Thanks for having us back. Hi. We're so yeah, happy so to be fun. back. Yes. <laughs> we had so much fun the first time. We're so glad to be back. Um, talking about something that we really, one of our kind of, you know, we love helping businesses protect their brands. We love it even more when they're great brands. And so we are on a mission to help businesses, new businesses in particular, come up with great brand names. And we have a particular way that we go about it. We're going to share it with you all today. So when you go to start your new businesses, you now know how to come up with a great brand name. Right. This is, this is good for our budding kitties, kitty entrepreneurs um, <laughs> on the right. So you'll now know how to create a good name for your business. We are excited. Mickey just started a, a candy business. And so she chose her name and she was like, you know, oh, and we, we designed our logo and we've done all these things. And I'm like, yay, Kittynomics is paying off. And this session is going to be great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So let me see if I can actually share my screen yeah. and figure out how to turn our presentation on. Okay, who can share? Okay. So how do I turn this into an actual slide show? I think you put um, slides in. Yeah. You are correct. <laughs> Why is it not working? From the beginning. There we go. <laughs> okay. So as we mentioned, we're going to talk about how to create a great brand name. Um, you already know us. Uh, great introduction. So we're not going to spend any more time talking about us. Instead, we want to talk about 
we kind of broken this down into three sections. We're going to talk about first, what makes a great brand name? Um, I really want you guys to start thinking about some of the brands that you love. I'm going to ask you to share them in the chat so we can kind of get a sense of the, the brand names that are appealing to you and what you love about them. Um, in the second part, we're going to come up with a great brand name for a new business that we're thinking about starting. And then we're just going to finish it off so that you know when you actually do come up with a great brand name, how you go about owning it. Um, because just because you create it doesn't mean you necessarily own it. There are other steps that you need to take in order to make sure that you actually own the name that you've come up with. So I I don't know if I can. Okay, I can. So I've got the chat open. I would love it if you guys share in the chat some of your favorite brands. Oh, some of your favorite brands. So Lil J, Josh, he says Nike, Gucci. What is the other ones? Is that Spanish, Josh? Um, Abercrombie and Finch says Timmy. And <sighs> Micah says Mickey D's, of course, Roblox. Apple, Samsung. <laughs> oh, these kitties, these are all kitties of my own heart. Right? <laughs> these are Netflix. all my favorite brands too. Oh, Netflix, <laughs> Disney, Target, says Josh and Timmy. This is awesome. McDonald's. Uh, Mickey says. Okay, this is going to be a lot, just telling me. Um, and then well, just know. give us a few. Hurry up. Okay. McDonald's, uh, Nike, Jordan's. Chick-fil-A, Apple, Netflix, YouTube, TikTok. What's the most obvious one, Mickey? What's your what's your top brand? This one is very obvious. It has to be Kitty Nami. Thank you. Nostalgia for Kay. That's right. <laughs> well, there's a lot of votes for McDonald's, um, but you know what? Yeah. We're not going to put McDonald's on our list of great brand names. Um, oh, Five Guys, that's a good one. YouTube, love it. Apple, love it. Um, some of my favorites, I love Yeti. Uh, I love <laughs> the brand Sweaty Betty. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that one, but it's athletic clothing. Um, yeah. What about you, Kim? What are your favorites? I'm a foodie, so I like um, <laughs> I like Cadbury. Um, yeah, food brands. Yeah, all the food brands. <laughs> so when it comes to brand names and great brand names, the ones that we love, there's actually a little bit of a science behind why we love them. Um, they, great names all tend to have, they fall into certain categories of types of names. And we wanted, okay, so now how do I get out of this chat? Okay. Generally speaking, great brand names are short, easy to say, easy to spell. Sometimes they rhyme, sometimes they don't, but short, easy to say, easy to spell makes a great brand name for one particular reason, and that is it makes a name that is easy to remember. This is the goal of every business owner, everyone who starts a new business, whether you're just starting a side hustle or a summer business, you want people to be able to remember your name. Because I don't know if you know this, but research shows that the average person needs to see something, needs to see a marketing message, including a name, at least seven times before they actually take action to investigate and look into what they do. So seven times minimum for someone to see a name before they're actually going to look further. And when you have a name that is really memorable and it's short, easy to say, easy to spell, you're going to be closer to seven, then you're going to be closer to 20 times before someone is actually going to remember you and look into what your business does. So when we look at some of the brand names that we love, Nike, Dairy Queen, one of my favorites, um, Justice, these are short, 
They're easy to say, and they're easy to spell. And that makes them easy to remember. This is one of my favorite things about brand names. And I think some of the best brand names out there are unexpected. They're regular words like Apple, like Mars, um, but they're used in a way that is really unexpected. So who would have ever thought that you would put Apple, which is a fruit, as a brand for computers? It's I unexpected. That's genius. Yeah, <laughs> I think genius. that's genius. Yeah. And that's why we remember it. That's one of the big reasons we remember it. And it will, it's etched in our minds and it will always stand out because who would have thought that a computer would be called Apple? <laughs> yeah. And same with Mars, a chocolate bar named after a planet. What? Like, it's so unexpected. And so names like this are a little bit easier to remember than names that are totally expected. Another one that we love, Spanx, totally unexpected. Not what you would, not what you would think as a, a name for underwear. And it kind of makes you stop and say, did they really use that name for underwear? Um, so yeah, these are great names tend to be unexpected uses of words that already exist or changed spelling of common words. Um, something that basically stops the scroll, makes you stop and think. Um, and that, that second of extra thought embeds the name into your brain and makes it easier for you to remember it. So, oh, you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, Tillin would like to know, why won't you put McDonald's? Why don't you like that name? Oh, we're actually going to get to that. That's the next oh, slide. So can you okay. hold off for that answer? <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not the next slide, but it's coming up. It's coming up. Um, coming up. McDonald's, Tim Hortons, these all fall into categories of names that we don't love. Yeah. So the other thing about great names is they're a little bit familiar. They kind of create a familiar image or thought. They, they, they make you think of something that you, you like or that is a positive kind of image or connotation to you. And so Apple, I mean, yeah, okay, it's a crisp, tasty fruit, but it's also, you give an apple to a teacher, apple is kind of like a symbol of smart. And so it kind of makes sense when you use it in connection with computers. Instagram, another mark that it's a name that is kind of, it invokes this thought of instant and gram. A gram is, you know, way back in the day, this is how they sent messages is through <laughs> grams. Um, so, you know, you got your instant messaging and it combines to make a really great name. Minecraft. Um, my children are huge Minecraft fans right now. Um, I'm not totally familiar with what it's about, but, you know, it makes you think craft is something you're building something. And so the, the, the use of the word craft in this name is it's invoking like this, oh, I'm going to build something with this game. This is a building game. And it makes you feel pretty good about what you're going to do. You know, Facebook, I think, started out as in as causing these really great, you know, familiar feelings. Now, I think Facebook is probably not so positive. And, you know, it's kind of the evolution of a great name into something that most people now hate. But it started out as having inherent qualities of a great name. Oh, that's a good question. Can I? Uh, so yeah, I don't have the chat open, so I'm not seeing the questions as they come up. Okay. So. I'll yeah. them for you, if you don't mind, Brielle has a great question. Why do some brands have an R in the right corner? And why do some toys have TM on it? Okay. That is a great okay. question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the, so those symbols indicate whether the brand is a registered trademark or whether it's, it's just in use or it's not registered. So, um, Brands, once you say you've come up with a business and you have your brand, um, once you start using it, you start developing rights in the brand and those are ownership rights. In that case, you would use TM. You would put the TM 
to indicate that it's, it's your brand, it's your trademark. Now, in Canada and pretty much everywhere, there is the availability for you to register the brand officially as yours. So you're now the official owner. Once the brand is registered, that's when you use the R. So the little R in the circle indicates that it's registered as yours. And the TM indicates that it's my brand and using it, but it's not yet registered. Mm. Did that answer your question? Let us know in the chat. That was a good question, Brielle. That was a good catch. Um, Carneen has a question. Why do brands always have to make sense with the products? That's a good question. Well, it really goes to this kind of familiarity. Um, people who create great names, they don't want to just create a name that isn't going to mean anything to the average person who they want to buy the product. They want to create a name that invokes some sort of feeling about the product, about how you're going to feel after you use that product. And so that's why great names tend to relate, have some sort of meaning, although I'm going to use the term meaning very loosely here, but they have a relationship to the product. The best names I think really do have a relationship to the actual product that they're connected with so that the name kind of gives you kind of a boost on what it is you can expect when you buy and use the product. Fantastic. Does that answer your question, Carlene? Does they have a question? Does the, uh, sorry. So Carlene, did that answer your question? Because you typed it again. So I'm hoping that that answered your question. Let me know. Um, Ms. Cynthia just, just answered it. Does it always relate to the product? Does, sorry. So let me read out this question again. Sorry, Ms. Stacy. I have a question. Does the name have to always relate to the product? I think Ms. Cynthia just answered that. So I think that's okay. Um, Brielle, if you have a big brand that makes lots of money, if the person dies, who takes the rest of the company? <laughs> <laughs> Well, wow, that's a good question. Um, well, you know what? We have an example of that right here in Ottawa. The owner of the Ottawa Senators hockey team recently died and his daughters now own it. There you go. So depends on who inherits all of their stuff. <laughs> so anyway, let's get back to what are some of the other things that create, that lead to great names. Um, obviously great names have to be unique. Um, they are unlike other names that are out there. Lululemon is a classic example. It's a totally invented word coined by the owner of the company. Um, it meant nothing in relation to the actual product. Um, but it was unique and it's still to this day is unique because they diligently protected it. TikTok. It's a unique name and that's one of the, well, it's also short, easy to say, mostly easy to spell. Um, and so it's also, these are why these kind of names fall into the category of great names because they're very unique. If you come up with a new name and it's very similar to another name that's already out there, particularly in connection with the same type of products or services or the same business, gonna be bought by the same type of purchasers, your name is not going to be great. That first name maybe was great, but if your name is very similar to it, yours is not gonna be great. Fantastic. So now <laughs> we get into names that are not so great. Not so Kimberly, great. Kimberly, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can see this little guy here on my slide is not happy. Um, as trademark lawyers, Cynthia and I are never happy when clients come to us with descriptive words as names, as, as proposed names. And these are words that simply just tell what your product is. You know, so if you're selling pizza and you, you your brand name is Tasty Pizza, then you're not going to stand out at all because everybody else who is selling pizza is probably going to want to say, "My, I have tasty pizza, right? So then you're going to start losing money because if I try to find your pizza store, I might get confused and I might buy from somebody else who says tasty pizza 
thinking that I'm buying from you. So you never want to use a name that simply tells what you're selling. Um, the same thing goes for creamy. If you're selling ice cream, then creamy would not be a good word because creamy is what we use to describe ice cream or dairy products, you know? So a lot of other people will want to use creamy and you're going to get lost in a whole sea of, of, of and as somebody said in the chat, they're all just lazy names. They're no good. So you'll stay far away from them. Does anybody have any questions in the chat about names that would necessarily not be a good name? Right. Mickey has a question. Um, what if, wait, actually, yeah, I forgot. Okay, let me just think about my question. Okay. What if you have a name that has like, that is completely made up and has no association to anything else? Is that a good name? Those are often great names, you know, because they're completely made up. They're unique. Nobody else uses it. So once you get people to know it by using it with your products, then those often make great brands because you're, it's completely unique to you. It never existed before. Um, so for example, Canon for cameras you know that brand never existed until it was built for that product um so getting back to the the slides so you again my little guy here is not happy um generic words so generic words are words that are just common you know words that you, everybody uses to describe products so if I want some flowers, I would probably say, you know, I want some fresh flowers, you know. So those are words that people generally use to describe things. Crushed nuts. I love my strawberry sundae with crushed nuts. So that, those wouldn't be good names um, because everybody uses them. And again, you won't stand out and you'll probably lose money because um you know i won't be able to find you if your brand is just fresh flowers when everybody else is saying that their flowers are fresh so stay away from common generic words yeah uh, the drew timmy wants to know what about gino's pizza here we go again with the names we're coming we're coming up to the names i think it's after this slide it's ah. after this slide <laughs> Okay, so names of places, again, are no good because, so I think I have here, is it Brampton Car Wash? Yes. Right, so there are several um, car wash businesses in Brampton and chances are, you know, most of them will want to use the location, the name of the location to describe or to, to advertise the business. So if you say Brampton Car Wash, again, you're not going to stand out. And remember, I explained in explaining the difference between the R and the TM sign, right? When you try to register your brand as a trademark so that you can own it everywhere, all over Canada, you know, if you're using a name like Brampton Car Wash, you're likely not. It's virtually impossible for you to get that registered as a trademark because it's the name of a place, Brampton, and then car wash only describes the service that you're offering. And so the trademarks registrar and the examiner is likely going to say, sorry, you can't own this name because all the other car wash businesses in Brampton should be able to use this particular name or to, to use Brampton and car wash to describe their names. The same goes for Toronto Golf Club and Jamaica Diner. Um, stay away from the names of places. All right. 
Oh, Mickey. And then here we, oops, does Mickey have a question? Yeah. Yeah, um, why do we, why? Why like, what? Why do we have to stay away from them? She just explained. Wait, she, yeah. Oh, from the names of places? Right, so, so remember, you'll have several other businesses in Brampton. And so what the law says in Canada is that, you know, Brampton is a common name of a place. And so everybody else in Brampton should be able to use that word in their own branding. So if you try to register your brand so that you can own it for yourself and nobody else can use it, then you're going to have a lot of problems to register it. And chances are you won't be able to register it. That's one. And two, you probably won't be able to stop other people from using it because it's merely the name of a place. Got it? Got it? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now the question, or dear old McDonald's and Tim Hortons, um, again, here my guys actually say no. <laughs> okay. Um, so the names and surnames of people are not good brand names. So one, you know, say for example, Mickey's Toy Store. I'm sure there are, <laughs> there are probably other little kids with the name Mickey. Um, the there's same for one Mickey. Mickey. There's, there's <laughs> only one kid in our mix, Mickey, <laughs> right? So, you know, you're not going to stand out if there are several other Julies operating around. And again, it's going to be hard for you to register it as a trademark because the, the Canadian Trademarks Registrar is just not open to allowing one person to own a name, a common name exclusively. Um, so McDonald's did not start out as a great name because it's it's a, a, it's a surname right it's the possessive form the ownership form of a surname however mcdonald's over the years of use and use and use in association with one single restaurant that's how they were able to register the name mcdonald's because after using it for several years and spending a lot of money in advertising and marketing, they were able to show that McDonald's became distinctive of them. So that when you see McDonald's, you're thinking about one restaurant alone and not several persons by the name of McDonald's. Right. So all of the names that I've said that we've said are bad names, they are bad by their nature. But, you know, this is where Cynthia and I come in as trademark lawyers. There are ways, for example, over years of use that we can try to get it registered if you want to register it as a brand. But it's likely going to be very 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 costly and it's going to require a lot of time and a lot of effort and so we advise to not use them from the start get a unique name a name that's unique like kitty nomics <laughs> from the start right okay so what's the next slide for examples, McDonald's, Wendy's, and Tim Hortons. Like, look at right. Those, so these are all names. No, <laughs> but they're all names. You're right. They're all they're no. all names. And so, you know, the, it would have taken years of marketing and you know a lot of commercial efforts, a lot of dollars <laughs> to make them into good names. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Oh, so see? Now let's create our own brand name. Um, we want to go through kind of the process that we do when clients come to us, they have a new business idea, they're struggling to find a great name. Um, and so we help them. And the first thing that we need to know before we can name anything, whether it's a new product or a program, or maybe it's an entirely new business, is we need to know exactly what it is you're planning to sell and who you are planning to sell it to. And so for our new business that we're creating right now, we're going to create a pop-up snack stand. It's going to sell homemade cookies, muffins, juices, and waters. Um, mm -hmm. So that's basically, we're going to name the entire business, but the business is largely just it's a snack stand and it moves around. It's not in one in one particular location. It's gonna move around to different places. Um, probably going to be most popular at parks and playgrounds where kids are playing basketball and other sports um, because this is where you're gonna find hungry people who need to have snacks, juices and water. So, who are the who are the most likely buyers out of your snack from your snack stand? It's going to be moms of small kids who forgot to bring snacks, um, and it's going to be hungry teenagers who are hanging out with their friends and also have nothing to eat, and so they're going to want maybe to buy some cookies and some water. Um, and so then you have to ask yourself, well, what do these buyers? What are the moms value about a pop up snack stand? What are the hungry teenagers going to value about a, a, a pop-up snack stand? Well, the main kind of features that we think are most important to these buyers are it's a fast snack solution. It's an easy snack solution because you don't have to prepare it and bring it with you. It's healthy, but it's also filling. It's going to kind of tide you over until you can have a full meal. So now we kind of have the basics the basic kind of values, the basic kind of features that are going to form the basis of our new name. So generally speaking, when people come to us and they have descriptive names, it's because what they've done is they've taken what it is they're actually selling and they've tried to claim it as a trademark or as a brand name. And like we said, when you have something that's totally descriptive, you can't own it and you can't stop other people from using descriptive words. And so the way to get away from creating a brand name that is completely descriptive or kind of lazy and based on a name or based on somebody's personal name is you have to start brainstorming from the perspective of what do people value most about what I'm planning to sell? And if I have a pop-up snack stand that's gonna sell homemade cookies, muffins, and juices, the features and the ideas that I want to start brainstorming name ideas around are fast, easy, healthy, and satisfying. And so the way that we do this when we brainstorm name ideas is we start with the value and then we come up with some synonyms. So words that mean the same thing. Um, so with fast, we got zip, quick, nimble, swift, speedy, high speed, agile, brisk, and frenetic. Um, easy, we have a bunch of different words here that mean the same thing as easy. So this synonyms are, they're an okay source of name ideas. They're not the best source though. The next best source of name ideas are really when you get into metaphors. So basically ideas that cause you to think the same thing fast. Um, a rocket is fast, hyper is fast, throttle, foxes and cheetahs are fast. Um, something that's shooting into orbit is fast. Um, dart, bomb, these things are all things that move fast. And so they are some of the things that you would wanna brainstorm when you're coming up with a really great name for your new business. Um, don't just stop with the synonyms, move into ideas that kind of invoke the same values or the same, the same thoughts and values as what your customers are really valuing about your business. 
So we took the four values of what we think our target purchasers are going to value about our pop-up snack stand. Um, and then we listed and we brainstormed some synonyms and then we brainstormed some metaphors and related terms. And so we have a whole bunch of different words that we can now combine to make some name options. And so snack bomb, zip snacks, nomad snacks, rocket snacks, snack joy. These are all names that kind of make you think of the values that we want you to think about our business. So does any, okay, we got questions. Let's go. <laughs> let's, ask them, let's ask the kids out of these five names. Oh wait, is it five? Yep. Yeah, five yeah. names. Which name would you guys want to name this snack stand? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. Which of this five names, which name would you pick? So I think Rocket um, Snacks. Rocket Snacks? Yeah. Yeah. I like Rocket Snacks. Layla says Speedy Snacks. Speedy Snacks is not a choice. It's, no, it's not. <laughs> and it's kind of descriptive. <laughs> See, Snack Bomb was my favorite. I like Snack Bomb. <laughs> my favorite is Rocket Snacks. Yeah, I like Rocket Snacks. Uh, yeah. Rick says Zip Snacks. Rocket Snacks says Timmy. Anaya says Snack Bomb. So you got somebody there for Snack Bomb. Snack Bomb. Oh, Rocket Snacks already taken. Yes, Rocket Snacks. Yeah, I like Rocket Snacks. But <laughs> I think it's a tie. Snack, Rocket Snacks, Rocket Snacks. The fourth one, Rocket Snack. Yeah. Snack. Shack. I think you're trying to say Shack on that one. I got yeah. um, Rocket and uh, Rocket Snacks. I think so. I think Rocket Snacks is the winner. Yay. Um, so, I mean, this is the way that you do it. You come up with a list of three to five. And then when you're working with our clients, we, we say to them, take your list, go poll your community, um, get on Facebook, create a poll, get people really talking about, and especially you want to make sure that you're polling the people that we, you would want to be selling to. So, you know, which names are going to appeal to the hungry teenagers? Ask some hungry teenagers, which names are going to appeal to the moms who forgot to pack a snack for their kids and get opinions on what names really resonate most with them so that you can take your short list of three to five names and you can narrow it down to your top choice. Um, and when you have a top choice, that's when we step back in and we help you to make sure that the name is not already in use. This is probably the most important step and when you know you come up with a name and it turns out that it is in use you kind of have to go back to your list um maybe rocket snacks was already taken and so now we have to go back and pick a second choice and make and do the exercise again to see is this name already in use and if we use it too are we going to cause confusion so there are some places that we look to see if a name is already in use the very first place that we look is always the Canadian Trademarks Register. When you are looking to create a new brand name in Canada, the first place you should look is the Trademarks Register because this is where trademarks are registered. Now, as Kimberly was explaining earlier, not every trademark is a registered trademark. So you're going to get some of the marks that are out there will be on the Trademarks Register, but not all of them. Now, here's something that you maybe didn't know, but here in the province of Ontario, when you start a new business and you're operating that business in a name other than your own personal name, you are required to register your business name with the province of Ontario. And so another place that you can look, oftentimes people, business owners don't take the extra step of registering their trademark, but they have to register their business name. So we search the Ontario business name registry to see if somebody already has started a business using our name. That Those two places give us a good idea of whether a name is already in use, but then your business needs to have a website. What business doesn't have a website these days? And so you want to make sure that you can actually get the domain name for your business. So we're going to want rocketsnacks.ca, 
hopefully rocketsnacks.com. Um, mm -hmm. But those are the main domain names that you are going to want to make sure that they're available. And if they're not available, are they being used in connection with a business that is potentially going to conflict with what you're doing? Because you don't want people searching for your rocket snacks uh, online and come up with somebody else's website. We also search the internet. We search social media Thank account names. Oh yeah, great. Yeah. Sorry, uh, for yeah. domain names, uh, Tim, you want to know, uh, don't domain names cost, or well, he has like cost $30, yeah. um, mm -hmm. but they also, but also with domain names, um, which, I uh, guess, yes, sorry. Uh, well, it could be a she or he. Uh, sorry, so they, I apologize for that. Um, uh, and for domain names, what do you think that it's a person a should get? Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you, she. I'll okay. say it again. Uh, <laughs> what do you think uh, all of the domain names that you should get in your name so that you secure the name? Which are the top mm -hmm. ones you should get? I always say .ca, .com, .biz, .net, .org, um, mostly because not that you're going to use the .biz, .org or anything like that, but you want to make sure that other people can't get them and use them. Mm -hmm. So um, for any given, I mean, like for our, well, we have an online trademark registration service called Markably. We probably have 20 domain names that <laughs> incorporate the name Markably with other things, with brand protection, with trademarks, with like, we've got a bunch of different domain names just to make sure, you know, not that we use them, but we just want to make sure that nobody else can use them. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to be thinking about how are you going to advertise your business? I mean, if you've got a pop-up snack stand, you're going to want to be looking at um, people following you on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, so that you can let people know in short notice where you're going to be. And so you're going to want your business to have the account name on all of these social media platforms that is related to your name. So when people, you know, search for you on Instagram, all they need to do is search Rocket Snacks and your page is going to be the only one that comes up. So these are places that we look to make sure that a name is not already in use and that it is actually available for how you want to use it in the future. And like I said, and if, if there are places, if these searches come up and they're showing conflicting uses that are out there, go back to your list, your short list of three to five names and think about your next one on the list and do the searches to see if maybe that name is available instead. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions from anybody online? Do you have a question, Mix? They were saying that it's very clear in the chat. <laughs> so you've got a great name. It is totally clear. Nobody else in the world is using it. Rocket Snacks is a go. <laughs> so now what are we going to do, Kim? <laughs> register 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 and then you can use your little circular r um right so once you've had your great name and you start using it as i said you do start developing rights but if your name is unregistered then you only have rights where you're selling so if you're only selling in brampton then your rights are only in Brampton, um, likely. And so if somebody starts selling rocket snacks in Alberta, then you probably won't be able to stop them. And I might buy from rocket snacks in Alberta and I didn't like it. And then I go online and I write a review. I didn't like rocket, rocket snacks right so you don't want that to happen when you register your brand as a trademark you own it throughout all of canada and so even if you're not selling your rocket snacks in every single province you can prevent other people from using it anywhere in canada once you register it it's, all, it's also much easier to enforce or to protect your brand when it's registered. You have an official certificate that says it is yours. So registering your trademark is your brand is 
very, very important. It's one of the first, it's the next thing that you should do after you've developed your brand. Um, and then, you know, use it, use it consistently. Um, and next slide, watch out for fakes. <laughs> <laughs> Right? So watch out, look on social media, look in the parks, look online to see if you see anybody using Rocket Snacks or anything that is too close to Rocket Snacks. And so, you know, those hungry teenagers are probably going to see it. Cynthia, what would be a name that is too close to Rocket Rockets Snacks? Mm. Um, Locket snacks, um, pocket snacks. I would. Right. They, they <laughs> sound so similar. Spaceship yeah, snacks. Yeah, same idea. You're right. Spaceship snacks. Right. It oh, is. that's really a great a one. Yeah, that's a, a name a that looks, one. sounds, or suggests the same idea is arguably too close to your name. And you want to make sure that nobody is uh, using a name like that and trying to, you know, ride on your coattails of the business reputation that you're building. I mean, you've got a great snack stand. It's super successful. Um, you're registered, you've registered your name all across Canada. So someday you could also franchise and sell your great idea to other people to use. And that's where you're really going to make a ton of money. Um, and so, yeah, you want to make sure I mean, this is how McDonald's stopped every, you know, the millions of other people with the last name McDonald's from opening a hamburger stand is they were crazy about enforcing their trademark rights and stopping other people from using something that is going to lead to confusion. But how would you stop somebody from using their last name? or their name of their business? Uh, it, it's challenging. Very it is hard. Very challenging. Um, and that's why they're not good brands. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, if it's not a powerful brand, like say McDonald's, or it's virtually impossible to stop somebody from using their own name to operate a business, unless you can show somehow that they're using it in a way to copy yours and to, 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 you know, take away your customers or try to benefit from your business reputation. But that's the exact reason, um, you know, that they're just not great brand names. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you come up with a great brand name and you own it across the country. And you can do the exact same thing when, you're, when your Rocket Snack Snack Stand is ridiculously successful in Canada. Then you expand across the border into the United States and you go through the exact same process there. Um, and next thing you know, you're going to be filthy rich. So... <laughs> Um, that is the la that's the end of what we prepared. We are here if you want to ask some more questions about brand names and how to protect them. We are happy to answer. Does anybody have any questions? Do you have any questions, Nick? No, uh, no, we have something to say. Oh, what do you have to say? It's six o'clock. Um, I have 15 people who are ordering. Yeah. That's awesome. So Michaela has started, Mickey has started a, 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 a candy business. And so she's taking orders and they came up with their name and then they chose, they, they created their own logo mm -hmm. and they have positions and they have, so I'm very proud of her and her entrepreneurship uh, spirit that she has, uh, which is awesome. Yes. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Cynthia, Miss Kimberly. That was awesome. Big economics round of applause. Our pleasure. <laughs> All right, let's wrap up in a few minutes, everybody. So um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just share. Can you, uh, Miss yeah. Cynthia? There you go. Thank you so much. We'll wrap up in another two minutes, guys. I'll go through this really quick, really quick, really quick. All right, last question. What would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer is real change that impacts the world. 
Why do we believe this? Because you know what? The more financially literate that you become, just the more stuff that you guys are going to be able to accomplish. Like you learned today, what makes a really good name and names to stay away from, right? So, you know, when you're choosing your names, because you guys are going to be such good business men and women or whatever you like to be referred to as, um, you guys are going to be awesome people, good business people. And, you know, just learning all of these things now will just help you so much when you grow up and to accomplish all of the many things that you guys are going to be. No problem, Micah. No problem. All right. So, uh, you guys are, are, or you people are young financial literacy ambassadors. An ambassador is a messenger and a representative. You guys represent us out there in the real world, right? So you share your knowledge that you learned on Kittynomics because knowledge is our superpower. Superpower. <laughs> so because knowledge is our superpower, you go ahead and you share it. And the more that you share it, the stronger that you will become. And that is really true. All right, coming up next week. Next week, we have Miss, Mr. Neil coming back on Kittynomics. So the week before, he talked to us about the rule of 72, the power of, of 72 about investing. He's going to be back with part two of that in our investing series with him. So that's going to be super fun. All right. And of course, we always love to hear from everybody. So if you have any other suggestions or ideas or new topics that you have not seen or would like to see on Kittynomics, or if you think that you have a phenomenal guest expert that we could get on Kittynomics because you want to learn from them, please, please, please send me an email. But of course, never without your parents' permission, permission. right? Always do it with your parents' permission. You're going to send me an email at kittynomics101. But of course, if you guys value the information that you hear on Kittynomics, please like and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. And before I wrap up, we have, we have Kittynomics has been uh, nominated for an International Financial Literacy Award. So we are super excited because we love to share Kittynomics with everybody around the world, right? We have people that join from all over. Um, and so we would love, love, love if we can get you guys to vote. I'm going to put the link in. I'm going to put the link in uh, in our in the chat box. And I'm also going to be sending out an email please ask your parents because you guys cannot vote. <laughs> please ask your parents to uh, help you guys vote. There it is. There's the link in the chat box. Uh, please ask your parents to help you guys vote for Kittynomics. And let's bring home this award for Kittynomics because we think our Kittynomics community is so fantabulously awesome. And I made up that word. <laughs> so I should trademark that word, <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody have a fantastic week. We thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Cynthia and Miss Kimberly. You guys were amazing once again this week. We thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you for coming back on Kinetomics and sharing your wisdom. Everybody have a And <laughs> bye. <laughs> All right, let's stop my share.